Hello world, if it's your first time here on my channel, my name is Anna and I work now as a software engineer at Content Square in France. I know from my own experience that it's very stressful and very challenging to pass the technical interview, especially when it's your first tech job or when you don't have much experience. In this video, I want to give you some advice that to my mind will help you to be less stressful during interviews and as a consequence, pass it successfully. Things that I'll be mentioning in this video, I think are applicable from Google-like companies to small startups. Uh, I hope it will be useful for you and let's get started. My first advice, even though it might seem really obvious, but is to prepare well for interviews for the algorithmic section, especially for Google-like companies. And um, at some point it's easier for these big tech companies because you know what to expect, that there will be like the algorithmic section and there will be like algorithmic challenges that you have to solve. Whereas in... Um, medium size and small companies, you don't know what to expect because it's uh, primarily the engineers from the team that interview you and they can ask various questions from, you know, the theory to your experience and they might give you a technical small challenge to code or, um, I don't know, they will ask you data structure and very specific questions related to languages or the technologies you use. But right now I want to, to tell you more about the algorithmic sections. I think the recipe for successfully pass this uh, stage is to practice as much as you can. And there are there exists a lot of websites that will help you to do that. Lead code, hacker rank. I know that there are many of them, but these two are the most, uh, you know, famous one. And there are lots of... Uh, technical challenges there and um, in lit code uh, what did I do for example when I uh, when I was preparing for Airbnb interview I even bought a subscription to see which uh, challenges which uh, problems does the company that I was interested in has and they sort it in you know in frequency um, you can, you know, sort it with the, okay, last, uh, last six months, this was like the, the questions that were asked, not, not the questions, you know, the problems that were asked. And, um, I read in forums that most of the time they might, you know, um, modify it a little bit, but the problem still remains the same. And, um, I don't know how much time it will take to go through all of the challenges the LeetHot has. I know probably uh, dozens of years. So it's uh, better. I really recommend you if you like want to go to you know, Facebook or Amazon. Uh, they have the text for that and there are less uh, challenges. Like, you know, it's... Uh, you, 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 the, the number of challenges you have to go through will reduce enormously and uh, you can go through all of them. It doesn't guarantee you that uh, you'll be given the same thing, but you have more chances to have the problem that you've already solved and you won't be lost, you know. And with this um, algorithmic problems, I don't think I don't think that one month, two months of preparations is enough. Um, for the person who I talked to and who successfully passed all of the stages of interviews and the algorithmic sections uh, in particular, they were practicing for like one year or even more. There is always exceptions, I know, but generally I think more practice, more chances to, to nail it. I don't want to be so much detailed about how is it going, um, the algorithmic sections, there are lots of videos uh, from Facebook itself, Google itself, how to, what what do they expect and how to pass this interview successfully. Uh, but don't just hesitate to Google, to search from YouTube or, you know, the articles that they give. 
uh, yeah, very useful and uh, they, 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 they show you what to do. But what I do want to tell you is that there are some mock interviews, you know, preparation for that organized. Um, personally, I participated in Facebook. So they do fake mock interviews. And during this uh, fake mock interviews, they give you a lot of uh, advice and feedback which is not the case during the real interview. For example, uh, what I had was that um, I was given a problem and I was trying to do that as they described in the videos. And the thing is that I, I received a positive feedback that that's what was expected. But, but you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, fast enough to, to go through all of the possible solutions. And I think the interview lasts like 40 minutes or so. And... I didn't end up uh, writing the algo for my second solution. And I spent too much time on telling what did I do in my previous experience, whereas an algorithmic section is, it's, it should be like pretty small. And most of the time you should be thinking about problem solving. I, I won't be much detailed if you want me to like share this experience and film a proper video on this topic, let me know in the comment or probably I can just even reply to you in text. Um, but yeah, this kind of events exist and don't hesitate to participate in that if like you, you, you really need to, to practice because you have the interview quite soon. Um, ask your friends uh, to conduct a sort of a interview with you so that you'll be practicing, it'll be less stressed in the real life. And if you feel like algorithms are only for Google-like companies, you're on. <laughs> I think especially for software engineers who like don't have much experience like I did. Uh, recently, when I was searching for the job, I all of the time I was asked to solve a short algorithmic problem. Um, I didn't have to like, code it, but I did have to provide a solution in pseudocode. Um, so and all of the time when I pass through the stage of the interview with the software engineer in front of me, um, I did have the algorithmic problem. So um, I think especially if you're a junior profile, you should practice that anyway. And I almost forgot to say, um, many people, they, they recommend this book, uh, Cracking the Code in Interview. And I don't know if they read themselves the book, uh, personally, I looked through because I used to work in Java and um, I read questions about Java and for me, they were really simple and <laughs> in my own experience, even in the interview for the internship, I had like questions that were deeper than what was described in the book. Um, so for me, it, it wasn't really useful. The algorithms that I described, well, I think it's more useful to practice them, like coding yourself, uh, in lead code. But if you, if you, but if you have another opinion of this book <laughs> and you really like, you know, read it, not the reviews, but, uh, you really bought it and uh, had a look. And you found it useful, I would uh, be happy to know uh, what do you think. Um, please let me know in the comment. But, but I really appreciate the work of the author. And I think at some point when we didn't have so much information about interviews on the internet, it was like precious. And uh, really thank you, the author, Gail McDowell. Thank you so much for this book. But um, yeah, sorry for me, it wasn't that useful. Last but not least about the section of interview preparation, uh, bear in mind that no matter how well you prepare, you won't be prepared enough. <laughs> and it's okay that you'll be nervous, that you'll be panicking during the interviews, but um, don't, don't fear of failure. Even if the interview doesn't go well, uh, it will, give you a lot of stuff to work on, you know, if you didn't solve the problem, so you will be aware of which kind of questions are asked. And this is a precious experience that you get. So 
uh, try to treat uh, the interview as a challenge and uh, there, there is no failure there. My second advice, um, prepare the speech about the experiences. I was always asked to share what did I do at my previous job and um, it shouldn't be like your speech shouldn't be long. If, if you don't prepare it, I guess you will be like, you know, not uh, well structured enough and you'll be kind of lost. And the way that you are not satisfied with your with your speech will affect, uh, you know, the the. Uh, the future process of interview going and if it was like perfect speech you'll be like confident to 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 continue the interview so and it will not only be like you know these questions are always asked during the first calls of the recruiter um, so you'll spend less time if your speech is prepared and uh, if you show enough you know your experience and your knowledge that you are ready to learn, etc. And I think showing your experience is uh, really important so that your future colleagues, possible future colleagues, uh, will be aware of what you're capable of doing and sometimes it will affect their decision whether to to take you or not. And um, also with the questions to prepare, uh, you can Google search for the list of questions asked by the interviews. But I've, uh, in my experience, I've been always asked like my biggest challenges at work, uh, if something went wrong, uh, if I had some situations which I'm not proud of, what I've done, what I would have done differently. Uh, so it shows you that you can work on your mistakes. Um, also think about something that you're proud of, uh, which can like, you know, show your skills because I, I know that when you're stressed during the interviews, it's not easy to, uh, to remember, uh, the good examples from your work experience. And I remember that at one interview, when I was asked such a question, I thought afterwards that I would have answered it differently. So try to think about all of the possible uh, questions about your experience that might be asked and try to kind of, uh, you know, well, not the full answer, but what you can answer uh, if this question is asked. The third thing, which is really important, it interviews, any kind of interviews, especially technical interviews, never lie and don't pretend to be what you're not. If there is a question you, that you don't know the answer to, don't try to say that you you know the answer. Just be honest and say, like, better to show, you know, I don't know the answer, the exact answer to this questions, but I think that it's like this, like that. So it shows that uh, that we we are we can't know everything. But it's important to show that, okay, I don't know, but I know where to search for this information. I know how to search for the information and I know what to do with the information, with the given information. And also, like, you know, if you're asked that, have you worked with this or that technology, for example, have you worked with Kafka? And, you know, you kind of have the idea what it is, but uh, you haven't experienced that. So... It's better to honestly say, yeah, in my project at company, we didn't have Kafka, so I don't have applicable experience with that, but I have the idea what it is and try to show what you know about this technology. But again, if you don't know, be, be honest, but show that you can, that you are ready to learn new things and you know how to search for the information because it's really precious, especially for junior profiles. Conclusion. Generally, I think you, you should bear in mind, you should keep in mind that the interviewer doesn't have the intention for you to fail. The interviewer just wants to understand if you match the role, match the team, if it's like, you know, it will be easy to work with you or not. And if the end, if you receive the rejection, it means that you simply doesn't fit either for your you know, cultural differences, you know, that, that the, the way you work is different. Cultural, I mean, that the, the culture at work. 
that you work differently and it doesn't suit uh, the way that they work. And it, it's better even for you that you were rejected because it would be uh, difficult for you to work with, uh, with, with the current situation, the cultural thing in, in the team, in the company. And also, but sometimes it's like your lack of uh, technical skills, technical expertise, and here is the way to improve. So probably for this company, you are not good enough, but for the other one, you are okay. And at the same time, it's better to always ask the recruiter the feedback from the from the interview, uh, because even though like, you know, you weren't good enough for this company and you're good for the other one, it's always good to know why you weren't good enough and what you can improve. Probably you look at this, this or that, and you can take a course, um, read, a, read a book or practice with a small project, uh, these things. So I think uh, the fact that you evolve as a, as a professional is a, is a good sign and you should never stop yourself from, from doing that. Well, that, that's it that I wanted to tell you. I hope that my advice was useful for you and you'll be less stressed during the technical challenges. If you have any questions, you can always ask in the comment or message me on Instagram. Um, I, I wish you good luck and uh, see you in my next videos. Bye bye. Bisous, bisous.